Do you get hungry if you haven't eaten for a few hours? Do you crave sweets non-stop? Do you get really tired after you eat? If you have PCOS and you've answered yes to any of these questions, you may have insulin resistant PCOS. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you all about insulin resistance PCOS, what you can do to naturally manage insulin resistance to therefore manage your PCOS. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a clinical nutritionist with a special interest in PCOS. Each week, I'm bringing you simple, actionable nuggets of information on how you can manage your PCOS naturally using the Nourish Natural Health PCOS Repair Protocol. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so let's get into it. First, let's talk a little bit about the insulin-resistant PCOS type. Insulin resistance is the most commonly occurring PCOS type. Up to 80% of women living with PCOS also have insulin resistance. Now, PCOS, insulin resistance, and weight gain are often all linked together. However, gaining weight is only one possible outcome of insulin resistance. Scientists have found that up to 75% of women living with PCOS who aren't overweight are insulin resistant. This tells us that insulin resistance in PCOS doesn't always mean you're going to gain weight. And actually, it's usually insulin resistance that causes the weight gain, not the other way around. PCOS makes it more likely for you to have insulin issues no matter how much you weigh. Essentially, the cells become desensitized to insulin when there's too much release from the pancreas. And when cells become desensitized to insulin, they can't let the glucose into the cell and out of the bloodstream. This results in unstable blood sugar levels. And when insulin levels are high for too long, it actually forces the ovaries to produce a lot of testosterone and other hormones. High insulin reduces a protein called sex hormone binding globulin. This protein usually soaks up extra hormones in the body, restoring a hormonal balance. And with this protein down-regulated, that means that there's more circulating testosterone. And these excess male hormones go on to cause havoc in the body. They kill your hair follicles and make your hair fall out. They also clog your pores and cause acne. And lastly, they can also make your fine facial hair turn into dark, coarse ones. Now, when you get into the cycle where male hormones are being produced, unfortunately, the body will continue that cycle. So the more male hormones that are being produced is only worsening this hormonal cycle. Also, high insulin levels lower the release of follicle stimulating hormone. This hormone is essential for cell eggs to grow properly. And so without enough follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, ovulation can't take place. And if ovulation can't take place, it causes irregular periods. Also, insulin can cause too much of the luteinizing hormone to be released. Now this hormone can stop or delay ovulation if there's too much in the system. If your high insulin levels are causing high amounts of luteinizing hormone, then this is actually suppressing ovulation and worsening those irregular periods. So by now, you may be wondering if you have insulin resistance. Some of the signs and symptoms are having dark velvety patches in the folds of your skin, craving sweets or sugar all throughout the day, feeling really tired after meals, craving stimulants like coffee after a meal, and weight gain in the midsection or struggling to lose weight in that area. Make sure you head to the Nourish Natural Health website and check out our blog post where you have access to a free quiz to find out the likelihood of you having insulin resistance. Now that we've spoken about all of this, I want to talk about some of the current problems with the diagnostic tests for insulin resistance. For one, it's hard to know if you have insulin resistance because the tests that doctors use aren't really that sensitive. The most common tests are fasting glucose and HbA1c, but testing either of these aren't going to be able to detect early stage insulin resistance. This is more like looking for severe insulin resistance when it's on the scale of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes. Essentially, they're only detecting insulin resistance once it reaches the disease state. And in fact, a study in 2014 found that HbA1c missed up to 45% of type 2 diabetes cases. This shows that it's really not great at catching early signs of insulin resistance. Fasting glucose is another test that's commonly used. However, even the upper normal limit on the results of these tests can be too high for the body, and you may already have the early signs of insulin resistance. So a third test that may be done, which is a really unpleasant test is the oral glucose tolerance test. Essentially you drink a sweet drink and then you get your blood test taken a few hours after to see how your blood glucose levels are responding to the drink. It's often used in pregnancy to check for gestational diabetes and it is more accurate than the first two tests. However, it's still not 100% accurate and in fact another study found that the oral glucose tolerance test missed up to 50% of type 2 diabetes cases. And a reminder, type 2 diabetes is when your insulin resistance has entered the disease state, not even beforehand. In insulin resistance, the blood glucose levels may be 
low, but that may be because there is so much insulin being produced to keep those levels low. So we may look at the results and see that your blood glucose is fine, but there is only because there is an abnormal amount of insulin being pumped out to regulate those levels. And as we just spoke about earlier, those super high insulin levels are going on to cause havoc in the body for your PCOS. So if you still aren't sure and you would like to pursue testing, let's talk about the gold standard test for insulin resistance. The best test for insulin resistance is the glucose tolerance test with insulin assay. This test is just like the oral glucose tolerance test that we just spoke about, but it also tests your insulin levels. This test has been shown to be up to 73% more accurate at detecting pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. This test isn't as common as the other glucose tests, so your doctor may not know about it. Make sure you persist and continue to ask or find a healthcare provider that can provide the test for you that you are asking for. Next, let's have a quick chat about metformin. Metformin is a popular medication that makes your body more responsive to insulin. And this can be effective in women when treating insulin resistance. It's important to note that more than half of women who take metformin also experience side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. It also depletes your vitamin B12 levels. So if you are taking metformin, you also need a supplement with vitamin B12. Now, deciding to use metformin for your PCOS is totally up to you. However, you can achieve similar or better results by using diet and lifestyle interventions. And so if metformin is bothering you, you might want to try inositol. Studies have even shown that inositol can be more effective than metformin when it comes to weight loss. It also helps to restore regular periods, which enhances your fertility. This will increase your chances of a natural pregnancy and you won't have to deal with the side effects of metformin. So let's talk about why you can actually have insulin resistance in the first place. Insulin resistance usually comes about because of a mix of your genes and your lifestyle. It's common that you're born into a family where you're predisposed and more likely to get insulin resistance, especially if there is diabetes or prediabetes in the family. But just because it's in the family doesn't mean you'll definitely get insulin resistance. It's your lifestyle and your life choices that go on to trigger these genes. For instance, eating a lot of fructose can increase your risk. Disrupted sleep is another huge factor that's commonly overlooked. Even just one night of bad sleep can make you more insulin resistant the next day. And so if you don't sleep well for a really long time, this drastically increases your risk for insulin resistance, especially if you're already predisposed through genetics. Another important factor is your exercise level because the muscles tend to open up to insulin as you exercise, making you more insulin sensitive, which is what we're after. This means not exercising enough is a risk and surprisingly your mother's pregnancy with you can also be a risk factor. Studies show that if your mum was really stressed or had gestational diabetes when she was pregnant with you it could lead to increased chances in you having insulin resistance later on in life. Gut bacteria also plays a role in your likelihood of getting insulin resistance. This is because a healthy gut makes you more sensitive to insulin so we can't change your mum's pregnancy with you but we can change a whole heap of other lifestyle factors. Making small changes in your diet, exercise, mindfulness, and sleep will go a long way. Also using supplementation alongside these lifestyle changes can really help you reverse insulin resistance. Next, we're gonna talk about the six core treatments of insulin resistant PCOS. Core treatment number one is the PCOS repair breakfast. A PCOS repair breakfast is a method we have created at Nourish Natural Health to ensure you start your day on the best foot possible. We wanna eat a protein heavy breakfast with up to 30 to 40 grams grams of protein paired with non-starchy vegetables or low sugar fruits. This is going to reduce any insulin spikes that may occur earlier in the day, which go on to cause havoc throughout the rest of the day on your blood sugar levels. By beginning with protein and low starchy veg, you're setting yourself up for success by supporting your metabolism. The PCOS Repair Breakfast also includes no sugars or sweetness, as well as some healthy fats. You could think of eggs with smoked salmon or a chia pudding with protein powder, berries, and nuts. These are all great options for a PCOS repair breakfast. Core treatment number two is the PCOS plate method. The PCOS plate method is essentially a guide to making sure you balance your plate correctly with the right amount of macronutrients. This will support insulin sensitivity and hormone balance. We wanna try and fill a quarter of a plate with animal-based protein and another quarter with gentle carbs. And then half of your plate should be non-starchy vegetables. You also wanna add healthy fats to your meal by drizzling them over or adding some avocado to help absorb all these lovely nutrients on your plate that are more likely to reduce inflammation. There are some ways that you can modify the PCOS plate method so that you can honor your dietary requirements. Check 
out our blog post on our website so that you can visit the FAQ and find out more ways that you can modify the PCOS plate method. Core treatment number three is to reduce high dose fructose. Cutting down on the amount of fructose that you eat is essential when managing your insulin resistance. This is commonly found in table sugar used in coffee, teas and baking. You will also find high fructose corn syrup in a lot of fizzy drinks like sodas. Even the healthy sweeteners like argave or honey, fruit juices and dried fruits can be detrimental in a diet of someone who has insulin resistance. Now fructose is also found in fruits, however it doesn't cause insulin resistance like processed sugars and this is because it becomes packaged with fiber. This means that fruit is something that you shouldn't have to worry about, especially if you are looking out for low sugar fruits. Core treatment number four is to choose your meal times. Now first, we generally don't recommend intermittent fasting for women with PCOS. This is because intermittent fasting or going long periods without food can increase cortisol levels, which go on to influence insulin levels. So it's definitely not effective for women living with PCOS. However, a moderate 12 hour fasting period overnight is beneficial for those living with insulin resistance. This means having dinner at 7 p.m. and breakfast at 7 a.m. the next morning. It's also important to have your breakfast within an hour of waking up to support those insulin levels. So honoring this window definitely means that you may have to skip those late night snacks. But remember this 12 hour window isn't a strict rule. This is something you can do to enhance your diet after you've already implemented the PCOS repair breakfast and also the plate method. Visit this core treatment once you have those two things in place first. Core treatment number five is to consider supplementing for insulin resistance. Once you've got your diet down pack, you can look to specific supplements that will help to stabilize your insulin resistance. At Nourish Natural Health, we have the PCOS Blood Sugar Balance Supplement, which helps to improve insulin sensitivity. It also lessens sugar cravings and aids in healthy weight loss. Magnesium and chromium are two other nutrients that help to support insulin sensitivity through various mechanisms. Now, as we discussed earlier, inositol is fantastic for helping those with insulin resistance and in some cases is more effective than metformin. And at Nourish Natural Health, we have our own, which is a 40 to 1 myo to D Cairo inositol. This blend has been specifically formulated to support those with insulin resistant PCOS. Next is core treatment number six, which is to find joyful movement. When you're exercising, your muscle cells open up to insulin. It is essential for managing PCOS because of the effect that it has on your insulin levels. Now, when it comes to the kind of exercise you should be doing, it's important to remember that any exercise is better than none. So step one is to find something that you love. Our brief for it is straightforward. The best exercise for PCOS is the one that you actually do and the one that you enjoy doing. While certain exercises can be more efficient at managing insulin sensitivity, it's important to remember to just get going in the first place. This isn't a short-term fix and something to do over a short period of time. This is a lifelong management and that's why you need to enjoy the movement. This can be anything from walking with friends, gardening, playing with your kids, swimming in the ocean, joining a sports team, or even just dancing. The point is to find movement that you love to do and to do it often. That's all for our core treatments and for this video. If you want more information, head to the Nourish Natural Health website where you can take a quiz to find out which PCOS type you are. Today we talked Talked about insulin resistant PCOS, but there are three other types adrenal, post pill, and inflammatory PCOS. The quiz on our website will help you determine what the root cause of your PCOS is so that you can begin your PCOS management journey. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can be notified when we release the next video. Thanks for coming along. I will see you in the next one. Bye!